Hello everyone, I am Daniel Gummo, and this is From Milwaukee to Nashville. This is for fans, by fans, and over there is my co-host, John Lewandowski. Hey. How was your two-day sabbatical when we played and we had to make graphics, but we didn't play? It was good. I actually watched yesterday's game. It was a pretty good game. Um, They did win. I think it was like three to two or three to one. But, I mean, you beat the Flames. The Flames are, uh, at best, a wild card team. So, you know, um, I think that when when you look at it, if we would have lost to Columbus, I'd add more of a head scratcher than losing to the Flames. It just seems that this team plays to their opponent's level. Yeah. And never higher. So then it just comes down to skill versus skill, and sometimes they get burned. Right. So that's kind of one of those situations. All righty. So today the Predators took out the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, no stranger to the Preds. They used to be our rival at one point in time when they were in the Central Division. They left the Central Division in 2011. From here, I turn it over to John. All right, so shots on goal. In the first period, Nashville outshot Columbus 12 to 9. In the second period, Columbus outshot Nashville 15 to 11. In the third period, Columbus outshot Nashville 16 to 5. And in total, Columbus outshot Nashville 40 to 28. <clears throat> now, face off percentage. The Blue Jackets were better at 51%, the Predators 49%. Both teams went 0 for 3 on the power play with six penalty minutes. The Blue Jackets had 29 hits, the Predators 20 hits. Predators had 13 blocks, Blue Jackets 12. Giveaways, the Predators had 11, the Blue Jackets had 7. Scoring in the first, nothing! Scoring in the second. <clears throat> was Cody Glass with his fifth with an assist from Phil Forsberg, his 21st, and Matt Duchesne, his 23rd. Then scoring at the 16.55 mark was Yakov Trenin with an assist from Roman Yossi, his 24th, and Jado his eighth. That is Trenin's sixth. Jado still can't buy a goal as much as he tries. Right. I mean, it, 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 I, I feel so bad for him in a contract year to be snake bitten like this. Right. Third period. All right. In the third period, Gustav Nyquist scores his ninth of the year, assisted by Beamstrom, his seventh, and Roslovic, his 21st. That was at the 901 mark of the third. In that manning the pipes for the Columbus Blue Jackets was I do not know how to pronounce your first name. <clears throat> oh, Danel Tarasov. Uh, Tarasov is a very young, good goaltender. He comes from a long list of uh, Russian goaltenders. If if that's the same Tarasov family I think of when I think of back to the Iron Curtain when they were so dominant and there was a, their, their, one, their backup goaltender was Tarasov and he came over here and lit it up for a little while until, you know, they figured him out. Um, yeah. Uh, he stopped 26 of 28 with a .929 save percentage. He, um... All goals against him were scored on even strength. In net for the Nashville Predators is former Chicago Blackhawk goaltender Kevin Lankinen. Kevin Lankinen had 39 saves on 40 shots with a .975 save percentage, played the full ice time, had one goal against on even strength, stopped 12 of 12 on power play, and 101 on short-handed shots. Your referees were TJ Luxmore and Peter McDougal. Your linesmen were Kyle Flemington and Brendan Gorlitz. Three stars of the game are Yakov Trenin, um, Cody Glass, and Kevin Lincoln. In. in that particular order. Yep. All righty. Head coaches, uh, head coach for Columbus is Brad Larson. Head coach for Nashville, John Hyde. Scratches for Columbus were Gavin Bayreuther, Liam Foundy, and Jonas Corpusalo. Scratches for Nashville were Mark Jankowski, Michael McCarron, Big Mac, and Roland McEwen, the Big Q. So we'll see you guys all tomorrow with the Milwaukee Admirals and the Springfield Thunderbirds. No, not the Isotopes, even though I want to make that joke. <laughs>
All righty. So the last time the the Admirals, the Predators, the Admirals played the Springfield Thunderbirds. The Admirals were outshot thirty-two to twenty-five. The Springfield going one for six on the power play, while the Admirals went zero for seven. Um, scoring a, a goals in this game were Matthew Highmore, his sixth with an assist from Nikita and Alexandrov, and former Milwaukee Admiral and Nashville Predator Stephen Santini, part of the PK Subban trade. That goal was scored on the power play. Jake Neighbor scores a shorthanded goal. The Admirals are third in the league, giving up shorthanded goals this season. In that, in that game was Devin Cooley. He gave up uh, two goals on 32 shots. In for the uh for the Springfield Thunderbirds was Joel Hover. He stopped 25 of 25. He is a very good young goaltender for the Blues organization. Uh that game was played at the Mass Mutual Center. I believe, to my recollection, I think this is the first time that Springfield is playing in Milwaukee. So for you Admirals fans, come on out tomorrow because it's camera night. Then go get to go on the ice after the game. I know it's yeah, Mark Thursday, but go out on the ice and get your picture taken with your favorite player. Your referees in that game were Brandon Schroeder and Elizabeth Mantha. Linesmen were Matt Heinen and Brent Colby. Um, Elizabeth Mantha is sister of Anthony Mantha of the Washington Capitals. And yes, I did fact check that. So, Thank you guys for watching. This has been From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Dan Gunnar. Over there is John Lewandowski. And don't forget, just have fun. Yeah.